Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is health insurance carrier stock performance. It's been amazing. Now, I need to start this video by saying that I do not do healthcare investing. I don't invest in healthcare companies. Now, the one exception to that is I do own an S&P 500 index fund. Now, I'm not happy about it, but that's the way it is. That's another story for another day. But other than that, I do no healthcare investing. So, with that being said, the performance of health insurance carrier stocks has been super awesome. Let's go through that. So, what we have here is the stock tickers for United Healthcare, Anthem, Cigna, and CVS Aetna. And I picked the starting year of 2010 because that's when the ACA passed, or it's just hugely mon monumental in terms of its impact on the health insurance industry. And then 2022, today. Now, back in 2010, United Healthcare's United Health Group stock was 32. Today it's 507. That is a compounded annual growth rate of 26% per year, which blows Warren Buffett out of the water. Warren Buffett, greatest investor of all time, he's like 20%. Right? 26%. In the past 12 months, United Healthcare stock has performed better than 92% of all the other stocks in the US stock market. Okay, next up, Anthem. Back when the ACA was passed, its stock was 51. Today, their stock price is 520. That is a 21% compounded annual growth rate. They are, in the past 12 months, they are in the 95th percentile. They are better than 95%. Of all other, their performance has been better in the past 12 months than 95% of all other stocks in the in America. Next up, Cigna in 2010 when the AC was best, their stock price is 31. Now 272. That is a 20% compound annual growth rate. They are in the 94th percentile, better than 94% of all other stocks in America. CVS Aetna back in 2010. They were two separate companies, but they're combined together now. The CVS stock was 27. Now the CVS combined and the CVS Health stock is at 98. That's an 11% compound annual growth rate. They are currently in the 86th percentile of all stocks in America for their stock performance in the previous 12 months. Now, the reason I'm focusing on stock price is because for publicly traded companies, this is why they exist. It is their raison d'etre as the fancy people say, which is French for their reason for existing, right? I encourage all of you to listen to an earnings call from any of these companies. It's incredibly informative. And listen, if you're an investor, of course you want the stock price to be the raison d'etre of these health insurance companies. You would never invest in a company unless, unless the stock price was their reason for existing. So. The fact that these health insurance companies have not just been a little successful in their stock price, they have been hugely successful in their stock price. And most industries sort of separate themselves into sort of, you know, 800 pound gorillas and some chimpanzees and then some monkeys. Okay, so obviously the 800 pound gorilla is United Healthcare at that 26% compound annual growth rate. To put that in context, the compound annual growth rate for the S&P 500 during the exact same time was 11.7%, less than half. United Health Group's compound annual growth rate is the same as Apple's during that same period of time. Apple's compound annual growth rate was also 26% during that exact same period of time. Now, you're saying, how can that be? Apple is worth literally trillions of dollars, and United is worth less than a trillion in total market capitalization. How can that be? The reason is because in 2010, Apple already had a much larger market capitalization than United, but they both grew at the same rate. The Fidelity Contra Fund, which is one of the most successful mutual funds over the past 30 years, been won by one person. It's got like 126 billion of assets under management. It is a large cap growth fund, hugely successful, 14% compound annual growth rate, which for a mutual fund compared to 11% is hugely successful. Okay, its holdings are Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and United Health Group. United Health Group is a large cap growth company whose peers are software companies. What's my point with all this? They're 
hugely successful. From an investing standpoint, they're hugely successful. Next question, why? Why are they so successful? Well, there's lots of reasons. One of the reasons is because, look, at the end of the day, the ultimate financial model of a health insurance company is they're really a financial intermediary, right? So you've got the providers and the pharmaceutical companies and the med device companies. They need to get paid. They need to get paid by the people with the money. Who's got the money? The insurance companies don't have the money. Who has the money is the payers, which are the government and the employers in America. And this dot right here, this circle, is the intermediary. It is all of the health insurance companies. They're essentially healthcare services companies. That's even what United calls themselves. They call themselves a healthcare services company. Now, so they're a financial intermediary. You can think of them like Visa or MasterCard. Their value is in their network effect. And network effects are hugely powerful when it comes to extracting value and having escalating stock prices. Just look at the stock prices for Visa and MasterCard. They are the network effect. Now, network effects have existed in other businesses in America that have also been hugely financially successful. And the reason is, is because all network effects have a soft underbelly. They have a weakness. They have an Achilles heel. And that weakness, health insurance companies included, is you can always go around the network. You can have the doctors and hospitals and physical therapists and pharmaceutical companies and medical companies, you can have them get money directly from the government and employers. You can go around the network. And that exists today for things like on-site clinics and near-site clinics and direct primary care and virtual primary care. There's lots of ways where you don't have to go through the financial intermediary. Let me give you some other examples of network effect industries where they were essentially then largely marginalized because people went around the network. Example number one, the railway system for transporting people and goods. There was a huge network effect because you had to have all the rails connecting all the nodes of the locations. It was a huge network effect. What happened? We built the interstate highway system and we invented the jet airplane. We didn't say, okay, we're going to build better rail networks. We just simply didn't use the rail networks as much. And the amount of goods that are shipped by truck and the amount of people and goods that are shipped by air skyrocketed because they went around. And these railways used to be the largest, most financially powerful companies in America. And today, they are not. Next example, cable TV. It was the intermediary between video content and the consumer. It had to go through the cable pipes. Nobody likes the cable company, right? Every, like, they made movies, the cable guy, about the cable company, right? What happened? The internet happened. And now you can get content without having to go through the cable. And in fact, many people have gotten rid of the cable completely. And the same thing is likely to happen to these health insurance companies in healthcare. Human animal spirits are incredibly powerful. If there is a network that people don't like, they will find a way around it. Now, what does that mean? My last point here is that, look, all payers, whether it be the federal government, state governments, um, or employers, look, they, they've got variable and fixed costs. The vast majority of the healthcare costs go through the variable cost of the network intermediary in the form of claims. And they have some fixed costs. You've got your PEPM pro fee for your admin fee. You've got PEPM fees for a variety of other programs that you might have as well. And at the end of the day, oh, and that, and that costs $10,000 per employee per year. But the point is, is that over time, you can shrink the overall size of the pie by moving away from variable cost network driven network intermediary requiring variable costs through claims, and you can do things without claims. You can have more healthcare services that are fixed through on-site clinics, near-site clinics, virtual primary care, direct primary care. Now, this has already happened. I've talked about this gobs of times. Now, in the state of Indiana and Wisconsin, their municipalities and their school systems, more and more and more of them have on-site clinics. It's like the thing to do in Indiana and Wisconsin. Why is that? because Indiana and Wisconsin have very high health care costs. 
And those school systems and municipalities, they can't just raise revenue. They got fixed tax revenue. They've got to do something. And they are the early birds to go around the network. So my point is, is that if we talk about healthcare and healthcare finance, we have to put it in terms of stock price for publicly traded companies and what that means for the future. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.